doors open Lowell. The second is to reflect upon the past and our many accomplishments, and our, I say our many accomplishments, because many of you in the room have helped accomplish many things we're gonna talk about today. And most importantly, to honor community members who have contributed significantly to the preservation of our historic buildings and our heritage. So I would like to start off by introducing Councilor Bill Samaras from the City of Lowell, and he is going to welcome us. Thank you, Celeste. But, you know, for full disclosure, I have to tell you, uh, first of all, John Leahy was supposed to be here to represent the city and represent Mayor Kennedy. Mayor Kennedy had a work project and he couldn't uh, uh, come to this event he wanted to. But John Leahy, all of a sudden a work project came up for him that he couldn't leave. So they went to the retired guy, and I guess it's me. <laughs> but you know what? I'm glad to be here. All right? Uh, one of my jobs in the City Council is, is to be the chair of the Subcommittee on Economic Development. And I'm going to tell you something. There are a lot of things that have happened in Lowell since we've been involved. And there are a lot of things that are going to be coming out of, you're going to receive notification of some really sound, solid developments. But you know what? Why is that happening? I'll tell you why it's happening. Because in the past 35 years, over a billion dollars in preservation has come to this city. Because of the National Park, because of the hard work of the Heritage Foundation, all of these different groups. When you talk about doors open you know, program celebrating its 16th anniversary. I mean, how better is it? A nationally recognized program about Lowell. So think about it for us on the city council, trying to pull the city together, trying to make things work. Why are things working? Again, because of the billion dollars of monies put into uh, historic preservation. Because of the vitality of the awards that are happening tonight because of the people that are here receiving those awards, they've done, they, you've done things that are so important to make the city a better place. And because of the, its doors open starts tomorrow, I, my timing, I have to be cued on a lot of things. My wife didn't give me all my orders when I left the house. But the thing is, it's starting. It's important to the city. It's important to helping us say to people, Lowell is the place to come. It has the amenities that you want to have. We have people who are working with companies. It has the vitality that you want. It has the heart that you want. And it's because of all of you here. Each year that I come, it just gets better. And I hear of better projects. And I hear of working together to make things happen. So on behalf of Mayor Kennedy and all the city council, please thank you for the work that you're doing. And keep it up because you have made a difference. Thank you. So all of this preservation work um, is not possible without the partnership with the city. They are a fantastic partner. We work very closely. Our planners are joined at the hip working together on all of the different projects. And some of those you're going to be hearing about this evening. Um, before we go further, I'd like to just acknowledge, in addition to the city of Lowell being a partner on Doors Open Lowell, um, I'd also like to mention tonight the Lowell Heritage Partnership, which is our partner in terms of these community awards and many of the projects that we do. They have a brand new president who was just nominated this afternoon, and I would like to introduce to you James Ostis, who is the new president of the Lowell Heritage Partnership. Thank you, Celeste. Thanks to everyone for coming here tonight. Um, as, my name is James Austis, and I am now, but as of an hour ago, the new president of Lowell Heritage Partnership. Um, and it's always a great honor to partner with Lowell National Historical Park. Uh, the um, LHP has been a friends of the park group pretty much since it got started back in uh, 2000. 
um, around the same time as the doors open, we'll both celebrating our 16th years this year. So um, I'm sure uh, a lot of you are familiar with our, pro our big project from the last year carrying over into this year, which is the Waterways Vitality Initiative, which the LHB kind of jump-started and has grown to include a number of partners, including, of course, the City of Lowell and the National Park. So um, uh, we're looking forward to another great year of that and another great year of uh, you know, uh, celebrating architecture, nature, and culture, as, uh, as our slogan goes. And thank you all for being here tonight. James is going to be back to help us with some of the awards. Um, I'd like to also recognize in the crowd uh, Russell Pandras, who is the Economic Development Representative from the Office of Congresswoman Nikki Sangas. Russell, thanks for being here. Their office is another great partner of the National Park, and we really appreciate having them right here in the boot mills. Okay, so the year in review. For those of you who were here last year, you may remember my year in review was pretty silent because I had completely lost my voice and could not do it. And I know you were all thrilled. But this year my voice is back. So I am going to give you, in 10 minutes or less, the Lowell National Historical Park year in review. I'm a little nervous, so set your clocks because it was a big year. And I'm not sure I can do it in 10 minutes, but I'm going to try. So I'll take a deep breath and tell you. Last year was a big year of anniversaries and celebrations. What were they? Well, the centennial of the National Park Service. A hundred years for the founding of the agency, celebrated across the country. It was also the 30th anniversary of the Lowell Folk Festival. It was also the 30th anniversary of <laughs> Angkor Dance Troupe. Dobby's looking at me like, what is this? It was also the 25th anniversary of the Songus Industrial History Center. Thank you, Jill. And this establishment. It's fabulous, all of these birthdays. We just spent the whole year eating cake and, and celebrating. There was so much to celebrate. So going to the Centennial, you know, the Centennial was a real opportunity. The National Park Service challenged us. They said, it is a time to build new constituencies across the nation. And at Lowell, that meant celebrating our many constituents that we have and reaching out into the community to meet people who perhaps we had never met before. And so we got together and planned this meeting and the staff were so energetic and excited, even though you know our, our staffing has gone down substantially. Um, and that's most parks across the country. So we're short staffed a lot of times, but that didn't stop these folks. They said, a hundred years, uh, we're gonna do a hundred programs. I was like, oh my God, a hundred <laughs> programs, you know. And guess what, when we tallied up this morning, I went and I looked at the report, uh, it was interesting that in 2012, the report to Washington said community programs, we did four. In 2006, uh, 13, sorry, 13 community programs, we did six. When I looked up 2016, we had done, find the number, 86 community programs, 86. That's the staff you see in uniform here, and some of them hiding not in uniform. Get away from the bar back there. Um, they did an incredible job, and some of those programs were online, the internet. They did hashtag Lowell Connects 100 Parks to 100 Stories. 100 parks to 100 stories, and they found connections between Lowell National Historical Park and parks, 100 parks across the country. Go look up the Facebook page if you want to know how we're connected to the Statue of Liberty. Or grab, grab, grab Dave Byers. Raise your hand, Dave, right here. Because Dave did all the research for this. We 
partnered with the Brush Art Gallery, and we had an exhibition called Telling America's Stories, 100 Years of the National Park Service. We had works by more than 50 artists, I love this, from Lowell to Sheboygan, Wisconsin, Boynton Beach, Florida, and Albuquerque, New Mexico. Artists from all over the country submitted artwork to the Brush Gallery, and it was on display, and at their closing reception, they had over 100 people come to that. We brought the parks to the people. We said, how do we connect to people who don't come to the parks? Well, we'll bring the parks to them. And so we identified community programs going on across the city, little festivals, events, parklets, different things that were going on, and we showed up. We showed up in uniform with tents, pop-up tents and activities, and we met our neighbors. We had a community weaving project where people could come and write their memories and stories about themselves on a piece of cloth that was woven together, and that showed up on our Founders Day. Founders Day was a big celebration here in Boarding House Park, and thank you to Dick Howe, who let me do a little walks on the history of the National Park. Now, I'm the new kid on the block, five years, right? So I knew I had to bring back Marie Sweeney, Mark Vagos, the first park ranger, Don Pearson, one of the founders of the Sangus Industrial History Center, and our own, where is he? Peter Osella, <laughs> our institution. Thank you, Peter, who led the tour around. Um, and then we had a big show down at Boarding House Park. If you missed it, I'm sorry. We actually brought an operating power loom out there, started up that power loom, and to the rhythm of that, through our partnership, Alan Williams, I wish you were here, UMass Lowell Music Department, Encore Dance Troupe, and Flying Ore Productions, there was a fabulous show that they created to the sound of that loom called the pulse of the machine, the beat of our hearts. And they, oh, that was nice, I cut it off too soon. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and they danced through time, all of the different immigrant groups that came to Lowell. It was a fabulous day at Boarding House Park. Now the Songus Industrial History Center also celebrated 25 years. And in 2015, to 16 school year, 1,563 programs to 47,000 students and educators. That's just one year, folks. Come out here in the morning and see all of the buses coming. They had programs throughout the year. They had all sorts of new programming that they've been doing, really innovative stuff that some of you might have come to. How many were browsing through Burks the other night? It was a great event, browsing through Burks. And they developed curriculum, and it, it used that film, remember Burks' score? It used this film to talk about immigrant and refugee resiliency. And there was a great panel of different individuals talking about their experiences here in Lowell. Um, as well as a summer newcomer refugee program that they did with the Lowell Public Schools. The Sangha Center is amazing. They do amazing programs. So thank you to UMass Lowell. Thank you to Sheila Kirschbaum, the executive director. <laughs> and then the Centennial also brought in money to Lowell which we like, we like money. Um, NEA, the National Endowment for the Arts, held a national grant called Imagine Your Parks. And they say, hey, anyone out there, you wanna do a program artistic about the national parks? Send us an application. Guess what, Lowell, the city of Lowell, got three, three grants. One for the Lowell Folk Festival, one to the Community Foundation to help with the restoration of the Pawtucket Prism, and the third one is coming in September, a new festival, the Lowell Art and Maker Festival that Cool is organizing. That'll be September 16th and 17th, so mark your calendars. We got grants to bring school kids here. Uh, it was a wonderful, wonderful year. The Sangha Center got a challenge grant and produced these great interactives at the Suffolk Mill. Lots going on. We have so many partnerships, folks. I could go on and on about our events, our support to public matters that we do with the Lowell Plan, the Middlesex Community College and the, the 
Cambodian kiln project that we do with them, and Yari Levon, the master ceramicist, and now a National Heritage Fellow. Do-it-yourself Lowell and their downtown history trail and the park day that we did with them, which our planner was really involved with. And most of all, for tonight, a very special shout out to the Lowell Heritage Partnership. The Lowell Heritage Partnership. Back in the 70s, when they thought they wanted a national park, they had this. We call it the Brown Book. It is an incredible plan. To think it was created in the 70s is unbelievable because they were so ahead of their time. Today, we have the Lowell Waterways Vitality Initiative Action Plan. And if you want to be inspired, see Fred Faust. Where is Fred? Is he still here? Fred. There he is. Fred can talk all about this. Fred, who was executive director of the first Lowell Heritage Commission, and now with the Lowell Heritage Partnership, he's the vice president. This is an incredible plan, and we're doing great things. For those of you who were over at Ecumenical Plaza a few weeks ago, this is part of that plan with do-it-yourself Lowell and many other partners. Okay, now, in two minutes, I'm going to talk about historic preservation in Lowell because Peter Ocello will kill me if I don't. Now, we're going to be 40 years old, 40 years old next year, next year, next year, 40 years old. And you know, for those of you who may have turned 40, you know, you still look great. <laughs> but you have to start taking care of yourself, right? And that's what the park is going through. Where's my maintenance chief, Paul Fontaine? There, see that hand there? Give that man a big pat on the back. Because, because of a hiring freeze this year, he's operated six staff down, and he's already uh, 10 staff down? Don't tell me, Paul. Um, he tells me every day. But he still, that crew takes care of all of the buildings and the gatehouses in this park. They do a tremendous job and they have a can-do attitude about all of it. You want to talk about windows? Replacing the windows at the Boot Mills. That was, we started 46 windows this year. Next year we're going to be spending millions on windows for the Boot Mills. Um, painting, lighting, all of the things that go on behind the scenes. That's Peter and Paul. Where's Mary? Okay. So, Pawtucket Falls Overlook is a big project. Our next big walkway that's going to be coming, hopefully 2019, around then, uh, did a great job. The park staff pulled together with NIMCOG and said, you know, we need to figure out how to get this walkway done. Three quarter mile extension of the Vandenberg Esplanade to School Street, including a pedestrian bridge and two rest nodes overlooking Pawtucket Falls. Improvements will include plants, benches, lighting, but a walkway that connects the Esplanade. So we're very excited about that. The park participated in design, the city's throwing in congestion and mitigation and air quality funds, and Mass DOT was already building new road there, and they said, sure, we'll put the walkway in. So it was a perfect marriage, and that's what Lowell is sometimes, it's just great collaborations. As for the historic district, people get confused about that. Don't you run the historic district, Celeste Bernardo? No, I do not. The his where's Steve Stoll? He's hiding. He's, oh, there he is. He's all the way back there. So the historic board regulates building construction. They issue permits but they keep the place authentic and beautiful. And we have a representative, Peter Rossella, who sits on that board. How many members, Peter? Nine members to the board. And this year they were busy, folks, because of the rehabilitation that took place in the historic district to the total of $106 million. Councilor Samaras was right. Lowell is all about historic preservation. Mass Mills, Picker Building Apartments, Lowell Community Health Center, Vision Dental Internal Medicine, Aiden Lofts Apartments, Thorndike Exchange, Lowell, former Lowell Sun Building Condos, and the Assets Powerhouse, a building we never thought would get done, is getting done. And for new construction, $246 million is either being done or coming through the new trial court, Edge Merrimack River, and the Athenian Corner Hotel. We're excited about hotel. Yay! So it's all great stuff. 
Um, we are thrilled to be here with all of you. As we move forward, there's big question marks about the budget next year. A lot of parks are really worried. We are confident and secure because of the people in this room and out in this community who help us every single day make Lowell stories known, preserve our heritage, protect our resources, and we're grateful and honored to be with you. So thank you so much. And I want to give a shout out right now to the next person who's coming up here. This whole event, of course, supported by staff, the annual report written by the one and only, the best assistant superintendent for operations in the National Park Service, ladies and gentlemen, Sue Andrews. <laughs> everybody for being here. This is a fantastic evening each year that we have a chance to look back at what has been uh, going on during the last year, start thinking about what's coming, think about that birthday, 40th birthday, and um, also, uh, as we have done for now 11 years, recognize specific projects and programs and activities in the city through uh, partnership with the Lowell Heritage Partnership in excellence and heritage in, excuse me, in excellence in cultural heritage and excellence in historic preservation. So, this evening, as we get into these awards, think about it in terms of many of the things Celeste was just talking about. In this city, many contribute to having a wonderful city environment, having a wonderful uh, array of activities going on, and in that mix, Lowell National Historical Park does focus on historic preservation and cultural heritage. So when we talked years ago about having an awards program, we decided that these were the two that we were going to focus on, two areas that we were going to focus on. And each year, we work with the Lowell Heritage Partnership to re recruit nominations, and then also, also a challenge is to make those selections. So this evening, we have three different awards. Um, Two, excuse me, one in cultural heritage, one in historic preservation, and I'm going to kick it off with our award in cultural heritage, and that is a, a wonderful one. Louise, can I, can I ask your help just to hold up this picture um, of the, the cover of the book? Just to hold it for a second. Hold it, pu push it up, it's nice and light. <laughs> this is the cover of the book, Mr. Magnificent's Magical Merrimack Adventure. And tonight we're recognizing Dr. Ingrid Hess for creating this book. And there's a lot to creating this book. Thank you, Louise. <laughs> Dr. Hess is an assistant professor of graphic design at UMass Lowell, and she's written Mr. Magnificent's Magical Merrimack Adventure, a children's book that will delight everybody visiting Lowell National Historical Park, whether they come with their families or they're visiting Songus, the Songus Industrial History Center. With the centennial last year as a target publication date, Dr. Hess collaborated closely with the park on the production of the book, choosing topics and themes appropriate for the park's young visitors and Songus Center students, and then refining the three written components of the book. This is an important part. It's not just a book. You page through and there's just one level to it. There are three elements and they address different reading proficiency levels and enable the book to be effective for a variety of readers. As for the characters, they constitute one of the most significant assets of this book. In the world of children's fiction, it's rare to find racial and ethnic diversity among the main characters. And in this book, three of the four children are of color. Ingrid took care to represent the people of today's Lowell and to do so accurately, from cu cuisines to character names, much research. In the story, the four children go back in time to see the land that became Lowell, flying in a hot air balloon, 
over, first over Native American settlements, then over colonial villages, and finally over 19th century, century industrial Lowell. The story is told with gentle humor and provides a child-pleasing way of exploring Lowell's history. Once the story was written, Ingrid produced sketches for a review and graciously responded to comments and suggestions. And for the near future, you can see the outcomes after those sketches of the finished cut paper artwork she produced, all painstakingly cut out by hand. And this is available to view, besides the book, the actual cut paper art is in a temporary exhibit over at the Mogan Cultural Center. And that exhibit not only shares the cut paper art, but also a glimpse into Dr. Hess's writing process and offers inspiration to create our own stories. So this book is a wonderful complement to the National Park Service Centennial and the events at the park, as well as the 25th anniversary of the Saugus Industrial History Center. There's a lot of different components in this, and the community benefits from having a thoroughly designed, well-researched work of historical fiction, and it helps children with their understanding of and pride in their community's history. Non-native speakers can access little history through the varied reading levels and the engaging illustrations, and families as well as classrooms can learn about the land that became Lowell. For, the, for this, the intercultural understanding that the story and its illustrations foster, for the history this book so effectively presents, and for the literacy it will develop in young readers, this book and its talented author-illustrator we ask Dr. Ingrid Hess to join us here as the recipient of the 2017 Excellence in Cultural and Heritage Award. And Sheila, why don't you come up here? In addition, we have a citation from uh, Congresswoman Nikki Songus's office in recognition of this award. that's really a magical combination of three different things. The first element is that the topic has to be interesting. Lowell history is amazing, and it was a privilege to be able to spend a year and a half researching and thinking about all the contributions that immigrant groups have made to create Lowell, um, for Lowell to become what it is today. The second thing that a great project needs is to be financially supported. And I'm amazed at the generosity of the National Park and its donors, of the Songus Industrial History Center, and of UMass Lowell. All three contributed to make this possible. I'm really, really grateful. But most important, a great project needs a team of intelligent, curious, hardworking people. And this project had that in spades. I'm so grateful to Sheila Kirschbaum, who was a wonderful partner in this book, and to Linda Sue. I don't think she's here tonight, but she was great as well. And I am in awe of the park rangers. You would be amazed at how much time park rangers spent editing this book, making suggestions, making it better. This book would not have happened without the fantastic staff of both Lowell National Historical Park and the Songus Industrial History Center. So this award is for all of us. Thank you. Peter Rossello will present our next award. Thanks, Sue. Um, I'm Peter Rossello, Assistant Superintendent here at the National Park. and. Um, a few months ago during uh, Irish Cultural Week, uh, Celeste and I found ourselves at St. Patrick's Church and uh, admiring all of the improvements that have happened there. And um, well, next thing you know, I've nominated it for an award, so that's why I'm here. 
So uh, St. Patrick's Church was originally commissioned more than 150 years ago by Pastor Father John O'Brien of Father John's Medicine fame to replace the original wooden church. Renowned ecclesiastical architect Patrick Charles Keeley, uh, who lived from 1816 to 1896, was chosen to design and build it. Um, now, after uh, over 100 years of use, uh, the interior of this church has been restored um, uh, to its grandeur, and Father uh, Dan, Father Dan Crahan is here, and um, he and the late he and the late Father Paul Millett understood and appreciated the importance of historic um, restoration and spearheaded the effort to restore the interior uh, of the church. Original paint colors and designs have been meticulously researched and replicated. Altars have been cleaned, as have uh, statues. Uh, the Bavarian stained glass windows and murals have been repaired and restored. The result has been nothing short of spectacular. The church is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. It is within the National Parks Preservation District boundary. The project won the 2017 Bullfinch Award from the New England chapter of the Institute of Classical Architecture and Art. And tonight's preservation award is to honor the work that's been done and is still being done at this wonderful church. Uh, we have uh, with us tonight uh, to speak John Canning of John Canning and Company, architectural conservators who worked on the church. John? Thank you, thank you, Peter. And um, it is an honor to receive this uh, this particular award because it is from the whole National Historical Park. I, and you know firsthand that the importance of preserving history of, of this area. Now, St. Patrick's Church represents more than history, though. It is a living monument to the spiritual lives of the Catholic immigrant populations that built law. From the Irish community it first served in the mid-1800s to the Latin American and Southeast Asian communities that worship here today. And it was said that it was designed by Patrick Keeley, who was one of the most prolific uh, Catholic Church architects. And that was in 1854. Uh, in 1904 it sustained a heavy damage uh, fire to its interior and its, and its structure. It was uh, then rebuilt and refinished, uh, the interior was, to, uh, in 1906. And it is to that, that period, uh, 1906, that significant period that our restoration was. Uh, we, we were building a link from the past to the present. The restoration included restoration that was mentioned before of the soaring Gothic high altar, the two side altars made from Carrera marble, with statues and bas relief work by the sculptor Joseph Sibbles. And this entailed conservation, cleaning of the marble, and resetting and anchoring uh, approximately 25, maybe even 30 pinnacles that over the past hundred years had deteriorated and were actually held together with wire and ready to fall. It also included the cleaning of the 22, uh, cleaning and conservation of the 22 murals depicting the life of Christ by famed, by famed artist uh, Gustav Kinkley, which were painted in 1906, incidentally, over a period of six months. And, and it took us longer than that to uh, restore them. Uh, one of the murals that Father Crahan likes to point out, one of the murals uh, was of uh, Christ leaving his mother Mary and going to his crucifixion. All immigrants reaching the world, past, present, and future, also leave their mothers. So building on that concept, we created two new mural murals and two new shrines, Our Lady of Guadalupe and Our Lady of Levine, 
both depict apparitions of the Virgin Mary that are significant to the Hispanic, uh, Vietnamese, Cambodian, and Burmese worshippers that now make up St. Patrick's congregation today. So um, what I think we succeeded by creating these new murals and shrines was not only making a link from the past to the present, but making a link from the present to the future. And I'd like to uh, say that my personal privilege to work with Father Craham and his committee, and tonight I see John and Alan here, who, who worked tirelessly with us to reach the best possible decisions for restoring the historic decoration and extending it to include the new cultural relevant spaces. And so once again, I'd like to thank the Lowell National Historic Park on behalf of all the craftsmen and artists of the John Cameron Studios. Thank you very much. Father Dan, can we convince you to come up here too and just join us for this? I know you didn't want to speak. Appleton Mill No. 5 is located at 250 Jackson Street within the Lowell National Historic District and Lowell National Historical Parks Preservation District. The Lowell Public Charter School is on the first three floors, while the marketplace known as Mill No. 5 is, is a renovation of the fourth floor and part of the fifth floor. Mill No. 5 is an indoor streetscape of historic buildings salvaged from throughout New England and beyond. It is an example of innovation and reuse of mill space which has generated retail activity where none previously existed. Mill No. 5's marketplace has, preserves the historic character of the mill and keeps the spirit of imagination, craft, and industry alive, relevant, and contemporary. It is a place and community that helps draws and keep people in Lowell or returning regularly to Lowell. Mill No. 5 provides its shop owners with a beautiful space, a community of shop owners who help each other and a curious, committed, and engaged market of customers and fans. Mill no. number 5 also provides space and a supportive community for people and ideas for community events and a passion to bring these to life. The mill features an independent movie theater, a vinyl record store, an uh, apo apothecary, a yoga studio, t-shirt shop, vintage books, photo studio, music school, vintage clothing, a cheesemonger, and the infamous Victorian lounge at Coffee and Con. It, off, it also attracts weekly craft and farmers markets, book sales, pop-up stores, and music presentations. It is home to Howl Magazine. It is an alternative shopping and retail experience that is artistic 
and filled with spirit, passion, discovery, and opportunity for shop owners and customers. The Boston Globe says, Mill Number no. 5 has steadily grown into a kind of hive of hipsterdom. <laughs> Jim Lachulis, please join us for Mill Number no. 5's Award for Excellence in Historic Preservation. to adaptive reuse to really cool hipster stuff, right? It's a great city. I want to end with a, a little note that I got from a visitor who came to the park. I like to try to do this at the end of the program, and each year I look for kind of my favorite visitor comment, so I'll read this very quickly. It says, uh, this was someone from Pennsylvania. They said, Dear Superintendent, Writing today briefly to congratulate you and the NP, oh wait, before I do, the food, UTEC. UTEC. Thank you, UTEC. A great organization. I didn't want to forget that. Sorry. Dear Superintendent, writing today briefly to congratulate you and the NPS on an extraordinarily fine history experience spent recently with my 88 year old mother visiting of which has been a dream of hers since reading the Mill Girls novels. I found the exhibits to be of great historical merit, tying in concepts of the lash and the loom in the largest sense of what commerce happened at Lowell, leading up to the 1970s when the site and the city as a whole was nominated for NPS status. Pieces on urban renewal, participant design partnering, cheap clothing globally and mill workers' voices all added to the comprehensive, excellent learning experience of the day. All, capital A-L-L, -L, staff that day made mom and me feel like the, quote, history nerd queens that we know we are. Many thanks for an uplifting day on Wednesday, September 14th, 2016 to your continued success. And we could not be successful without all of you. Thank you for coming. Please enjoy the drink, the food. We really appreciate all of your support.